like this airline. Yeah, it's nice. Large and in charge. Large, like us? That's better. We're doing Delta. People are fleeing scene. Chances are that they were drinking or something no too, goodness. right? So this call is just outside of town, still within the city limits or just on the edge. She's dark out here. Okay, slow down. Right here. Look at this. There's a lot of lights. We're late to the party. We arrive on scene. I see the vehicle in the ditch on its side. Lots of tire tracks all over the gravel road. You were in which vehicle? He was a driver. The driver of this one? Yeah. OK. When we got there, there was alcohol all over the road, all over the ground. We're kind of presuming that they were drinking. You could kind of see the tracks where they came around the corner, punched her, and then lost control and ended up right there. Were you wearing your seatbelt? Yeah. Were airbags deployed? Uh, no. I had four of my buddies, yep. and then a couple of girls hopped in. I don't know the girls are, but they seat. ran. So. My concern when I hear that some people have fled the scene of this MVA is, are they trying to hide something? Innocent people don't run. They, they've done something wrong. OK, come with me. You're OK to take a couple steps? There's booze everywhere. So you weren't drinking? No, I was drinking. <laughs> They pulled over in an approach not too long after the train tracks. Shut their, shut their lights off, so the headlights, tail lights. So what exactly happened here? Let's say we got about two or three car lengths away from them. The lights come on. We were at another party and it got shut down, so we're going to another one. And they beeline her off the approach. And uh, everyone was yelling and shouting. All of a sudden you see dust just flying out from the back. I got aggravated and I kind of... Two fish tails. Yeah. You jerk the wheel or what? Did you do that on purpose? I was expecting alive. to come to a fatality, to be honest. Any questions or anything for me? No, I don't Before we, mind. no? You just feel kind of upset right now, right? Is that your car you were driving? Yeah. Yeah, so you were driving, they upset you, you jerked the wheel. The only person I seen that was buckled in was the driver. Everybody else was laying in the bottom of the SUV. There was feet and hands and legs just hanging out of the bottom windows. I was just like, oh God, please don't yeah. let there be somebody dead. This kid is telling me that he had no drinks, that he was the DD when he obviously smelt of liquor. You do smell like you've been drinking. Yeah, so no I, lying I, I, to I, me I, anymore, I, okay? To be honest with you, I have a little bit, but if How I, much is a little bit? Uh, maybe three. Okay. Well, you can go with this um, officer right here, and it's his turn with you, okay, bud? With impaired drivers, the person that's been drinking and driving usually isn't the one to die. It's usually the other people that are involved in the collision or the passengers. I don't think these kids realize how lucky they are. I've seen people die from a lot less than what they've gone through. I think this kid is lucky to be sitting in the back of a police car right now, as opposed to being transported to the hospital in the back of an ambulance. That kid just reeks of alcohol. I remember being in high school, being in the back of a car, very similar situation to these kids. I hope the fact that they were all able to walk away from this tonight, they learned something from it and can move forward. This is a 911 hang up. Cody does have a call in. Before she hung up, it was a female patient on the line stating that she was seeing ghosts. Huh. Seeing ghosts should be on your side for his house. White one right here, maybe? When we get a call hearing that somebody's seeing ghosts, two things come to mind, and that's either pre existing psych issues or drugs. Oh, yeah. Front step. I'm talking on the phone. Hey, 21 us there. Do you want to come this way, dear? It's dark, it's night. This is the call where your scene survey is very important. We initially see one person, but we don't know she's the only person. So being aware of our surroundings is important for our safety. What's your name? Where do you live? A lot of the times when we're present, a lot of people kind of keep things in, especially if they've been doing drugs. It's frustrating because I can't help you if you're not telling me exactly what ails you kind of thing. Have you done any drugs tonight, dear? What did you do? 
What, cocaine? Okay, and uh, what about any alcohol? <laughs> you were drinking too, hey? How much were you drinking? You drank a lot. Whiskey, hey? Okay. Who lives here? Uh, my family member, maybe. Okay, and how'd you get here? Uh, they gave me a big left, and they basically left me on their front porch to bleed to death. To bleed to death. Can I see your cut? Do you want you to cut see. it on there? You know, most people with a lack like that will just go, like, they won't even call us. I guess she has nowhere else to turn. I tell you what. How about you come to the ambulance? And we'll take a look at it where there's more lights, okay? It's tough to see out here. Well, she's got a small lack on her hand. I don't know how she got it. How did you How did you get the lack on your hand? Did you fall? Were you pushed? Pushed into the window at this house? No, in the back. At the back at, of this in house? In this house, at the back. Okay. Well, just come. Oftentimes, in these situations, these patients don't always tell us the whole story. They kind of want to make it seem like they did nothing wrong or they want to hide something. She took drugs and, you know, maybe she's thinking, well, now the cops are here, I'm going to get busted with drugs or, or are they going to charge me with vandalism or whatever. Do you want me to check your blood pressure again? Okay. Her well, emotions are high, she's getting into a fight with her friends, but she's on cocaine. And it makes it really hard talking with somebody when they're on that. She never could clearly explain why she needed help. Deep breath, okay. Which, uh, which house is this? Do you live here? Whose house is this? She just couldn't give us a straight answer. You can just answer our questions. You're not in trouble, you're just trying to make sure you're okay because once you leave here, I want to make sure that you're going to be okay. This young woman has admitted to drugs and alcohol, and I feel that she's called us because she doesn't know where else to turn. We're going to take her to the hospital. She'll be treated and offered further help. I'd say some paramedics definitely um, adrenaline junkies. You know, it really just depends who you are. You know, some people do it for the thrill, and I guess everyone has their own reason. There's no real thinking technically involved when you're on scene. You personally, I find I just go, I just do it. And the only time I really get stressed out is after calls when you think, should I have done this? Should I have done that? What drew me into becoming a paramedic was going into people's houses and, and trying to figure out what's best for them and, and, and how to help them. People are calling because they're having a crisis, they're having an emergency, and they don't know what else to do. We try and bring control to that out of control situation. I like being that one who brings that energy level down, who brings calmness. Even though on the inside, maybe you're not the most calm person, but on the outside, you always stay calm. You always be the light at the end of their tunnel. Oh, this could be good. That was sweet. Oh, I think I'm... Oh, it's not this one, is yeah, it? Yeah, I think it is. Oh, God. This house is known for its gang activity, for its violence. So this is a house we've been to quite a bit, and it can be kind of rough, so just kind of keep your head on the swivel. When you go to a call at that house, you just be extra cautious. I guess last time I was here, the guy had a knife. I recognize the house. I'd been to a call there before. Some of the people that hang out in that house are known to have weapons on them. 10 4. Hello, ambulance. Despite knowing the nature of this house, we don't wait for the police. This gentleman could be having a medical emergency. Hello? Ambulance. Can you put out your cigarette, sir? If you're smoking and short of breath, let's put that out. We've got oxygen okay? here, okay? No. If you're short no, of no. breath, no, we're nobody's smoking in here. Okay. Go for it. Take the whole thing. I'm just gonna cancel the fire department here. They're just walking up. Can you slip your arm out of here? What's going on today? Do you have anything sharp on you that could poke or stab me? The last time you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You had something sharp. Might have been, my Might have been your. So how come we're here? I'm gonna die tonight, I know I will. You feeling short of breath? Yeah, I am. How long has that been going on for? 
you need to move ahead this way now. You know what, sir? We're just here to help you, right? So you have to help me help you. If you're not willing to have us I here. Didn't call you. Who, who did called? They did. Okay, maybe I'll just go chat with them and figure out why we're here. Excuse me. Hi. Did you call for us? Yes. Okay. He uh, He's just saying he doesn't want an ambulance and I... He was trying to call one and freaking out saying he wanted an ambulance here. So I called for him and then he... I told him they were on his way. He's like, good. And then now he doesn't want it. So initially he did want the ambulance yes. and that's why I called in all of a sudden now... He was, he... he was like trying to... He was trying to talk to me. He was like gasping oh. for air and trying to talk, but he couldn't. Right. Your blood sugar is 6.6. .6. Your heart rate's 100. And 11, SATs are 95, 110 on 78. From what we can see, all his vitals look okay. What I think is he's potentially just sad. He's having a psychological problem. And you currently don't want to go to the hospital? Well, what, uh, is everything okay? I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, vitals are okay. Yeah, you don't have to go to the hospital. No. We just come when we're called and, okay, I guess that's it. Have a good day, Ron. Have a good Bye. night. It's hard walking into houses like that knowing that people don't live as well off as, as I'm living. Um, it's hard to see somebody struggle. They kind of get tough to see when you see it every day or every other day. How did you get your prosthetic leg, Ron? I fell 36 feet in North Battleford. What, was, what happened that time? I fell off the bridge. In North Battleford? Me and my buddy, we went drinking. Yeah. Yeah, we were up on the bridge and I fell through. It became pretty apparent to me that he just needed someone to listen to what he had to say. Sometimes I've been here and there's been, you know, five, six, seven other guys and you don't even know some of them. I can't do nothing. I mm -hmm. can't fight back. So how do they get into your house? They just open up the door. I knew that I couldn't fix his problems and he knew that I couldn't fix his problems. But just talking about him, I think, makes him feel better. But if you need something else later tonight, you let me know. You just dial 911, okay? Yeah, it'll be okay. Okay. I feel like he just wanted to have his voice heard, and we're there to listen. Responding Delta, seven year old female, unconscious, breathing confirmed. Fire will be responding on channel two. Should I just go over down to all the way down to first? Yeah, it's in between 2nd and 20. So we can turn left onto Avenue. Oh, right there's Avenue. Can I turn to the next one? No, there's going to be train tracks. Uh, so turn onto Avenue I, and then we'll go on to Delta Yeah, It's apparently cut off by train. No exit. So uh, turn down to Avenue. Never been here. Yeah, let's take, uh, we might as well take the drug kit. Should be a narc overdose. Hello. What's your name? Hello. We arrive on scene. We find this unresponsive female patient on the floor. Hi, dear, what's going on? In an unresponsive patient, early treatment uh, can be key. It could be uh, a number of different things that would cause her to be in the state. Yeah, I'm gonna feel your wrist here, okay? Can we sit up, my dear? This could potentially be a serious situation. She's not making much sense right now. But... We don't know the exact cause, so finding a medical history is important. So she takes lisinopril. Yeah. Amylodipine, rosovastin, atenolol, amitriptyline. What is on her belly? Are you itchy? We're trying to figure out why this patient is unconscious. What kind of past medical history does she have? Is she a diabetic? She is diabetic. She is diabetic. When Tom tells us that the patient is diabetic, immediately we're thinking that this may be caused by very, very low blood sugar, to which, if left untreated, she very well could die. Look at me, look at me, okay? What city are you in? Squeeze my hands, squeeze, 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 squeeze. 
you know obeying commands. I'm getting the patient to squeeze my hands just to see if she can follow simple commands and whether or not she has adequate motor function. Five, that's seven. Eyes open, four. That's 11. Next, we're checking this patient's blood sugars to see if they're too high or too low. Anna, open your eyes. So she's uh, hypoglycemic, Tom. Her sugars are half of what they need to be. She needs to be treated immediately with replacement sugar. Glucose paste. Now, the easiest way for us to do that is with sugar through an intravenous. I got to the other arm doesn't have much for uh, veins. Now getting the intravenous is usually what proves to be the most challenging. Diabetics don't have great veins. Her blood vessels are constricted. She's sweaty. We don't have good lighting. Conditions are not ideal. It's just not going well. How's that line coming? Not good. Sorry, dear. OK, squeeze my hands. I got an obstacle here. That's brighter. Yeah, one second, just so want to see if this is flush. Cap's off. Let me know when I can open it up. Okay, open it up. Running. Can you check her pupils for me? Sure. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. What if we give her a sternum rub? Give her some pain for stimuli, see if she responds to it. Yeah. What year is it? That's amazing. Now the patient's answering questions she couldn't answer before. This shows us that our treatment is working. You know what went on today? Why we're on the floor and you got all these gentlemen around you? Have you been taking it? Have you been eating? Should we go to the hospital? Get you checked out? Within minutes of giving this patient sugar, you'll see a change in her mentation start to come back to normal. Okay, so we're gonna turn a bit. I feel the bed right behind you, okay? There we go. Now we'll swing our feet up to the end. Yeah. This woman's very lucky. Her grandson found her when he did. If we'd have got the call a few hours later, the outcome could have been a lot worse. Sigh of relief, considering how she initially presented that it was just as straightforward as giving her some sugar and making her feel better. Can you fall? Are you pushed? The young woman we picked up earlier in the night was transported to hospital. She was treated, observed until she was sober, and later released. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. I appreciate how very serious diabetes symptoms can be. I have a cousin that just recently passed away from complications from diabetes. He was far too young. There's booze everywhere. There was feet and hands and legs just hanging out of the bottom windows. Anytime I do a call like this and uh, everybody walks away, I'm pretty excited about that. I've done lots of calls where that's not the case. I think about that and then I think about all the times in life where close calls could have turned into something quite a bit worse. You know, how many bullets have we all dodged in our lives? 